Today we're going to be talking about the installation of the Mitel MyCollab client software on a Windows operating system. Currently the client software is not available on any other platforms other than Windows as far as desktops or PC or laptops go. So the Apple MacBooks and uh, the Apple products, desktop products, there currently is not a client available for that. Mitel will be coming out with a client by the end of the summer of 2015 for that, um, for those um, operating systems, but currently there's not one available. Um, there is a solution for people who use that, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but um, there are apps that can be downloaded for the iOS um, operating systems on iPhones and iPads, but not currently on the desktop devices. So. There are two ways that uh, this will most likely be deployed in your environment. Your system administrator might already have the software installed on your computer. If they do, you'll have an icon on your desktop that you can click and log in for the first time. If not, then they'll most likely be sending you a welcome email from the server that will guide you through the process of downloading the software and installing it yourself and um, getting it up and running the first time. So. That's what this video is going to kind of discuss in more detail is how to get the software from the welcome email and how to run the installation process. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'll pull up my email here. So you'll get, uh, if you're doing it with the welcome email, you'll get a link um, in the welcome email on where to, on how to get the software downloaded. So the welcome email will look some similar to this. It'll have like a do not reply at and the server name. This information is important later with the, for the installation of the, um, the software because we'll need the fully qualified domain name of the server so the client knows where to connect back to in order to connect into the server. Additional information on this, uh, this email, we have uh, your username and password which you'll need to log into the client. There's also any phones that you have currently associated with your account on the server. Also your voicemail box. And then there's several links down here towards the bottom. And these are the ones that we have to know which one to click the right link to get the software. So the first two links here are actually user documentation explaining the user portal and the MyCollab client, which is the client we're going to be downloading right now. The user portal is another service that uh, is included with the Mitel um, collaboration suite of software that allows you to log into a web portal and create audio and web conference bridges, as well as maintain your, your voicemail box from a web view type of format. So you may have that feature enabled on your system as well. You'd have to verify with your system administrator. So um, these two links down here are actually links to log into different services with the uh, Mitel suite. Uh, one is the user portal, which is what this documentation explains. And the other one is, is the web client. So the web client for the MyCollab client is actually what would be used for those people who are running Apple laptops or desktops. If they want to use the MyCollab client, they'll have to use the web client version currently as there is not a client that they can download and install on their machine. Um, people who also, Windows users can use this as well. This is also good to use if you're using like a tablet or something like that. You can go to the web client and use, use it from there. Like if you're using an Android tablet or, or a different type of device that might not have a app that can be downloaded. Then we have the, the My Unified Communicator Advanced MSI file here. This is the actual MyCollab client file that we're going to be downloading and installing. And then below are the links for mobile devices. So Blackberries and Android devices can pull their... Um, their app directly from the server. It's usually easier for these devices to just install them from their the Google Play Store or wherever they normally get apps because these apps will be loaded up on those websites too to pull down. The last one here is um, the MSI, the installation file for um, My Voice uh, Link integration. If you have Microsoft Link and you're integrating this with your Microsoft Link, then you can click that and download that. This would make sure you'd have to make sure your system administrator has this enabled and you have a link available and you have the right licenses and so forth. So, so we're going to go up here to the Unified Communicator MSI file. Once you click this, it will start a download process of the um, software. You can save it on your desktop or you can just run it from the server. 
So I've already got mine uh, downloaded. So if I click that, it would just go to the same website and download. But so I've already got mine downloaded. So we're going to go ahead and just run it from my desktop. So after you download the software and run it, it'll pop up like this. Uh, you just hit next to go and then you accept the license agreement, hit next and just pretty much keep all of the settings default. So we want to do a typical installation, not a complete or custom installation. And then we're going to hit next. Now, when we get to this point is when you're going to have to put in that server name, which I kind of identified from the uh, welcome email earlier. So if we go back to that welcome email, scroll up, it's going to be everything past the at sign on the from email address is what you're going to need to put in that information in there. So I'm just going to copy this and go back to the installation and hit next. It's really important to make sure this is correct. If this isn't correct, it's not going to know what server to connect back to and the software is not going to run. So click install. Once it's done, this will automatically be checked to, to launch the client. So we're going to hit click finish. I'll minimize these windows so we can watch the client launch. First time it launches, it's going to look very just like this. You're going to have your login and password, which you'll get from your welcome email. So we'll go verify. I'll show you where that's at again, just to make sure everybody knows. So pull up this email. Right at the top of the email has the user login ID and passcode. So whatever the default passcode is, the user, the administrator sets up will be in this in this email. So we'll go ahead and use that to log in. Then you want to click remember me and log me in automatically just so it doesn't have to prompt you for your username and password every time. And then we'll hit log in. Now the first time you log in, two things are going to happen. You're going to get this change my password window come up where you'll have to change your password. And then right after that comes up, you're going to see that this, um, this other window comes up where it's asking you to install another client. You want to go ahead and hit yes and, and install that client. Otherwise, every time you launch the MyCollab client software, it will try to make you install this. Even if you're not using the audio web conferencing portion, you still want to get the client installed so that you don't have to worry about it later. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and hit yes. Now, this could take a little bit of time depending on how long it takes to download the software from the server. Um, but I would recommend not moving forward and changing your password until that is done because inevitably as soon as you start typing windows will start popping up and start irritating you so I just usually wait till that's done installing and then we'll move ahead with changing the password so I'm going to pause this while this is finished the install and then we'll start up as soon as it's done here all right so once it's downloaded it will finish the installation process which you can see on the screen here when this is done it will finish with with the OK once it's been installed so we're just going to click OK all the other windows will close automatically. Now you can go ahead and move forward and change your passcode. So we're going to use the old passcode we had there. And then as far as what your new passcode needs to be, if you if you expand the password restrictions, it will show you what requirements are needed depending on how your system administrator set up the server and how, how um, secure they need to have the passcode. So make sure you follow these guidelines, otherwise it won't take your new passcode. As soon as the two passwords match, then you'll, you're OK. We'll, we'll, you'll be able to click OK. So very important to make sure you remember what these passcodes are. If you use any of the other services with the Mitel Collab Suite, uh, if you install this application on your, your mobile device, you'll need the same passcode. If you're logging into the web portal in the web client, you'll need the same passcode. If you're logging into the portal where you can um, do audio web conference bridge, um, configurations and set up audio and web conference bridges, you'll need the same passcode. So important to make sure you know what this passcode is, even though we've checked the client to remember the passcode, you'll need to use that manually if you're logging into other interfaces. So once that's done, we'll hit OK. The top of the screen will change there for a second. It'll say connection lost. That's, that's totally normal while it reconnects to the server with your new credentials. 
Um, once you're connected, you'll have uh, these items up here will come go green, and and depending on how your your um, your statuses are set up, you may have one or more of these items. You should at least have your phone, but depending on how the status is set up, it should green up with some items here. So once that's uh, done, then you're completely logged in. And that's the end of the installation and login process. So we'll come back next time and we'll discuss some more services and more features that are actually inside the client itself.